As a long-time Linux user, and let's be honest, a little bit of a Linux fanboy, I have often besmirched people who regularly use Wine to run Windows software. I mean, Wine's been around for decades now, and, and while I've always thought it was fairly darned impressive how much Windows software you could really effectively run using Wine on top of a Linux system, I always kind of was annoyed by the fact that people were doing that instead of focusing on native Linux software, right? Like stuff written for GTK or Qt or, or one of the other various frameworks focusing on a Linux native thing. Software built for Linux. Why? Why use software built for Windows? That's Windows software. Yes, you can use it in a pinch, but come on, use Linux native software. And over the years, my my feelings on that have have morphed a bit and i'm now at the point where i'm a bit of a, a bit of a wine fanboy oh my gosh the wine development team continues to absolutely blow me away in their nerdiness and their dedication to keeping old software functioning. Case in point, the latest development release of wine, version 9.14, fixed significant bugs in Windows 3.1 software running under, under wine on Linux. Seriously, like sig significantly weird, random Windows 3.1 16-bit software that like four people use nowadays, but you can run it really well under Wine. Uh, specifically, check this out. This is from the, the bugs that were fixed in this development snapshot. They fixed bugs so that you, you could effectively run the 16-bit Windows 3.1 version of Civilization 1 under Wine on Linux. They fixed that because some of the dialogues weren't working quite right. They fixed it. Bug fixes against Windows 3.1 software. Really crazy to me. AOL 5.0. They had specific bug fixes for the installer of AOL 5.0. AOL 5.0 came out in 1999 and was one of the later versions of AOL that still supported Windows 3.1. So this is a Windows 3, also Windows 95 and, and 98 and whatnot, but it supported 3.1. So you can install a Windows 3.1 version of America freaking online that came out in the 90s, the 90s, a quarter of a century ago under Linux and it works. That is nuts. You can't do that on modern Windows. Uh, the 16-bit version of Civilization 1 does not run or install at all on modern versions of Windows. It doesn't. It doesn't support it. <laughs> but you can run it under Linux with Wine. And there's a whole bunch of other things they, they add in here, like a crazy, crazy number of, of bug fixes. A lot of them are for games. A lot of them are for uh, various other installers and whatnot. But the thing is, most software works. If you go, if you go check out the Wine HQ, if you go to winehq.org, they have an application database there where you can look through every random piece of Windows software you can possibly remember from the early days to now. And how well does it run under Wine in various versions of Wine? Well, like you remember Ski Free, the old Windows 3.1 game? Yeah, it works great. It works fantastic. It works perfectly under Linux, under Wine. Uh, the same is true for Castle of the Winds. That was a great old Windows 16-bit uh, 16 Windows 3.1 game. And, and here's the crazy bit. This includes like versions of Office. And I've been doing this lately because why not? Microsoft Office 95 right, which was the first real big 32-bit version of Office. There's a historical thing there. There was a 32-bit version of, of, of Office of like Microsoft Word 6, but it wasn't by and large used. And the first widespread 32-bit Office was, was Office 95. So I went and grabbed that. I'm like, you know what? How well does that run? It's perfect. It is perfect. Perfect. It looks great. It's crazy psycho fast. I mean, it's like greets lightning. If you've been using like LibreOffice, 
and then you move over to Microsoft Office 95 on your Linux box, I'm telling you right now, psychotically faster. And you know what? It's a little bit nicer to use. The interface is a little bit cleaner. It's a little more straightforward. The toolbars make a little bit more sense than LibreOffice. I'm a LibreOffice fan. I like LibreOffice. LibreOffice is open source and wonderful and it's a great, great office suite, but it's also mega, mega huge, super cluttered and very, very bloated. And if you go back, you can use pretty much, not completely, but pretty much any of the old versions of Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint and you can run it under Wine, under Linux, and it's perfect. It is fantastic. It is faster than any of the current Linux software. It runs crazy, crazy fast. It looks good, and they work perfectly. And this, this is like that across the board. It is amazing. And I, I, I've mentioned this before, but we're coming to a point we're right now, as Linux users, it is easier to run Windows software than Linux software. And that, that, I know, I know many of you are like, excuse me, Lunduke, I'm gonna flip over a table and throw my laptop through a window. I'm not liking what you're saying right now, but hear me out. Many particular, like games, let's look at games, because games is, is a really good example. I've been hardcore gaming on Linux since back in ye olden times where people made fun of people for trying to game on Linux because sound didn't work and there were no games and whatnot. There was a company called Loki Games, Loki, uh, named after the god, right, Loki. And Loki Games ported a number of big AAA titles from Windows to Linux. And one of my favorite of those games was Railroad Tycoon 2. Railroad Tycoon 2 is great. I like, I like model railroads. I like Railroad Tycoon. They, they did a whole bunch of games, shooters and all sorts of stuff. But Railroad Tycoon 2, not an overly like a demanding game, no big 3D engine or anything like that. It was a real simple 2D simulator game. Well, I bought it in a box, came on a CD, it was fantastic. It played great for years. But then something happened and the libraries on modern Linux systems got significantly out of date with what was required for that version of Railroad Tycoon 2. To the point where simply trying to get Railroad Tycoon 2 running was a monumental task. And sometimes it was doable. And sometimes you'd end up just borking your whole system just to get Railroad Tycoon 2 to work. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse over the years. And some of those problems are alleviated by certain things being open source. And it makes it a little bit easier to, to update them and re build them and because those Loki games were all closed source it's a little bit harder but even the open source stuff is technically getting more and more difficult I mean look at older web browsers go grab the the first version of Firefox okay I'll, I'll wait the first release of Firefox for Linux go grab it and run it it will not run Right? The binaries that exist out there will not run on your system. Now, now you can get around that by creating like a true environment and installing a good, you know, two dozen or so specific compatibility libraries and kind of get it up and running, but it's a real challenge. And you can make that easier by creating an app image that includes all of those libraries in it, but it, that's only only really doable if you've got the time and the expertise or if someone else has done it for you which most for most things that hasn't been the case and so we're at a position nowadays where backwards compatibility on Linux is getting significantly more problematic it's it's working less and less over time so where where modern software really in order to run on a Linux machine can't be more than a couple years old. You get you get more than you know a few years old, and things just start to break. But if you go back and grab software from 1993 that run on Windows, better odds than not, it will run without error or with very few problems on Linux under Wine right out of the gate. Just install Wine, you know, apt or yum or whatever. Install Wine and then run the application, run the installer, you've got it, it works. So at this point, 
I would argue that wine is almost becoming a better, more usable native application framework for Linux than, well, any of the other application frameworks for Linux. It, it Realistically, I mean, it, I know that's sacrilege. I know that's awful. And I've said this sort of, this sort of idea before where it seems like this is, this is happening and it's just progressing more and more in that direction. I, I, I think I first noted this a few years back where it seemed like Windows or Wine was, was becoming a real viable alternative as a native Linux applica application framework. Like we can start to really consider, okay, I'm gonna develop my software for Windows, but I could develop it on Linux and specifically targeting a Linux release, even though it's using Win32 API and all these Windows frameworks and whatnot, but I can target Linux and that's a real viable option. This really started to be the, that case a few years back. And now with the advancements we're seeing in Wine and Proton and the work that Valve and Steam are doing on the games front, most of the Linux games on Steam are Windows games. They just happen to run great under Linux, oftentimes better than they run under Windows. So at this point, if you're looking to run Windows software, I think the best option is really to run Linux and Wine because you have the widest array of software options available to you, including all the way back to the 16-bit era. And I think that's pretty amazing. I mean, that is a testament to what the wine people have, have accomplished. I'm gonna bring back this list of fixes because it's just a little bit too ridiculous for words. Again, the wine folks have been so focused on making sure that Windows software runs great on Linux systems that they've fixed bugs that impacted America Online for Windows 3.1. That's, that's the level it's gotten to. We're not talking, oh, Office won't boot, or oh, it's all screwed up. No, no, no. We're, we're at the point where we're fixing AOL problems. How many people do you know are like, man, I would switch to Linux, but I need America Online for Windows 3.1 to work. Nobody. But the fact that we're at the point that we're such completionists and perfectionists about the preservation of historical software that Wine now supports that under Linux, that's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. So cool. So very, very cool. Uh, go, go grab it. This is in the uh, development branch, by the way. So. Uh, you want to get the the development packages for wine of version 9.14 the the 9.0 release is great i mean it it just doesn't have these fixes for aol but if you don't need the aol one go just go grab the 9.0 release and grab yourself ski free and castle of the winds and find yourself an old copy of, <laughs> of microsoft office 95 from 30 years ago and run it without error and i'm telling you Take the challenge. Grab an old version of Office. Uh, here, here, here. Hold on. Let me let me show you something here. Um, grab an old version of Office. Let me close this screenshot here. Go to the app database, appdb.winehq.org, and what you can find. Here, let's see if this loads up here. Um, is you can find a list of of all the different versions of various software, how well it's been tested against various versions of wine. And what you're gonna find is a lot of them just simply haven't been tested in a long time because the app database is just this huge user generated thing. Like for example, it shows that uh, um, um, Office 2002 hasn't really been tested since, you know, wine version 1.1.0, right? Long time ago. Like these sorts of things just happen. The reality reality is whatever you find here in the app database, Wine's probably going to support a whole heck of a lot better than what it shows in the database. But even just with what it shows in the database, you will notice like Office 97, it says it's platinum rated. And that's basically meaning it's been stable and perfect for a long time. So go grab it, try it, take the test. Grab an old version of Office. I think WordPerfect works works equally well, like the Windows version of WordPerfect, it's fantastic. Run it under your Linux system. Install Wine, run it under your Linux system, see how it goes. Load it side by side with LibreOffice, and you tell me if it's not crazy fast. Likewise, 
take the Firefox challenge. Right, right. I'm not the biggest Firefox fan in the world, but go grab the binary for Firefox version one for Linux and Firefox version one for Windows. It's doable. Put them on your system. See how long it takes you to get each one of those running. Right, just with the straight binary. The Linux one, if you manage to do it, you'll have borked your whole system and spent your whole weekend on it. The Windows version will just simply install and run and be ready to go. Now, running Firefox version 1.0 with out of date SSL and everything else is dubiously ineffective at nowadays, but just the same, it's an interesting test because it's, it wasn't that long ago that this software came out. It should still function on modern systems, but the Linux versions don't. It's fascinating, fascinating. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers of the Lunduke Journal who make all of this possible. Go on over to lunduke.com, lunduke.locals.com and hang out with me over there. It is wonderful, it is joyous, it is nerdy, it is truth telling. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the intertubes, I do declare, end broadcast. <laughs>